so just set it down on this table right here gently ah, there we go now let me take a look at look this at interesting oh I do have an idea but I'd really like to see it a little bit more before I say anything don't want to get anyone excited hmm Let's get a little bit of a better look at you. Oh, these are just normal matches. Some people believe that you're when you're doing item identification you need to do something special for every part. A lot of it is really the mundane. Let's see if I can get this. I always have a little bit of trouble lighting the matches. There we go. Second try. Not bad. Okay. My goodness. This really is something special. Where did you two find this? See, I see, I see, I see. Okay. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Wow. This really is quite the beauty. Uh, come on. Come a little closer. See the way that when you move the flame around, it kind of shifts the color of it. It starts out this lovely shade of purple, but then when the light gets real close to it, it's almost pink. One of my favorite colors, yes. Alright. Do you want to take a look as well? I had a few. Getting a little better at that. Now come on, come a little closer. Do you see it too? It almost has a glittery surface to it. Just beautiful. I think it'll look even better once I get it a little bit cleaned up. Okay. Of course you two can watch. We do business quite often, don't we? you find this thing? Oh, just conferring a little bit with my diagrams. Is it safe for you two to be going all the way down there? Well, I suppose that you two are more on the experienced side. However, you know me, a little cautious. Okay, alright. Let's get this cleaned up. This is a family formula that we use to get off any sort of crime. It's gentle enough that it won't damage it in any way, but it's strong enough that we only have to clean it for a little while. No soaking or anything, which some of the items protest to verbally. Some of them speak, you know. Perfect. Needs to look nice and clear when we work with it.
tells me that this object has a little bit of a story to tell. Most of them often do. Most of them have quite a name of stories. Generally, the things that are made nowadays don't really need identification the way they used to. You've got books going about so that you can just take a little look at it. However, old objects, they remain mysterious, especially very powerful objects. I know. <laughs> it's very exciting. My job can be extremely thrilling. There are some inscriptions on this. Seems like, though they're in a very old form of the native tongue of Rorvetsal. Oh, I do speak it. You see, my family actually came from Rorvetsal. Take a lot of the magic techniques that we used to identify from them. So I learned a little bit as I was growing up, even though. It's not really in usage anymore. At least not this ancient one. Okay. Okay. Mm. Better, better cap this just to Make sure I don't lose that cork. Now this stuff is also very important to the process. You can make sure that there's no protective aura around it. If I start on this identification past just the cleaning process and such without checking the wards, well, it can be a little bit dangerous. And I think you two have seen quite enough of danger today. Now this item, what are your plans for it? Well, I suppose that does kind of depend on what it is. Oof. But I'm a little curious. Well, of course I've heard of the air and their coronation. What about it? A gift? Well, if I'm right about my instinct with this item, I would say this would be a fine gift. No words. We're quite lucky. You never know how many words are going to be on an object just from looking at it. There was a time that I came across one item that had 16 words on it. It took forever, but this one seems all good. And we can get to the magic purpose checking part. You see, these stones are quite rare, but our family passes them down. There's one for every one of the artificer family. And, well, let me show you a little bit about what it does. Objects, magic objects specifically, I should say, whether or not they speak they are alive. And so, upon contact with this crystal, we can determine what the object is trying to say to us. It's not, again, necessarily a verbal thing, but we can understand the object's purpose. And then we can go from there. 
it's not just this that determines what the object is. It's kind of you're just asking the object, what are you here for? And then the identification from that point on is narrowing it down from what the purpose is and finding out, you know, what time it came about and what that might have to do with it. Hmm. This is a very old and very specific kind of magic. Do you see the way that it's radiating from it? And the glow coming out from the back over here? Yes. And I can say with at least moderate confidence now that this item is what was known in Ruritzal as a chimera. No, no, not the, not the chimera as in the, um, as in the beast, but its meaning is sort of, uh, to capture memories. You see, when you would use a chimera in the olden days, you would be recording with perfect clarity what a memory you had at the moment was. Like, let's say, let's say that you're giving it to the air. The air could have someone else use uh, the chimera and with absolute perfect precision capture what's going on at the coronation. You can see everything. You can hear everything. Of course, uh, how well the actual memory uh, is stored depends on the skill of the user who's pointing the chimera. However, it can lead to some amazing capture of history, of, of feelings, of... It's a primary source, is what I'm saying. So, the long and short of it is, this is an amazing object that you found, and very, very rare. Nowadays, we mostly rely on our, you know, our books and our spoken records and such to make sure that we have something to look back on. But this, this proves that we can show people in the future what is going on right now. Let's continue with the identification process. You see, it may be a chimera, and we can understand that perfectly fine, but without really going through the entire process of our artificer craft, we can't know, number one, if it even still carries the ability to record the memories, or number two, if it already has some memories stored in it that we can refer back to. That might be special in a different kind of way. Now this object here is what some believe to be a magical torture instrument, and what it does is it, it scares the object into telling you if uh, it has any secrets. Yes, I know, it sounds a little bit cruel, but believe me, it's in no actual danger. Um, Chimera, you didn't hear that. You are in so much danger right now, and you need to worry very much and tell me your secrets or I won't stop using this instrument. in and out sometimes when I get really close with this. I think it's trying to tell me a little bit about what it can do. Mm. I think that this one has quite a bit of memory storage in it. Not necessarily the strongest model, but clearly a very beloved one. It's still in pretty great condition.
brushing it with restoration dust. This, my goodness, this should be able to sort of heal any uh, simple damage to it so that it's in tip-top condition when you gift it to the air. If that is what you do, still do, still think you'll be doing. And I think that would be a marvelous idea. Getting it in its most polished form probably a good idea. So, as it stands, we could probably say that this is done for right now, but something that I am a little happy to tackle on if you two are willing to wait for it is I can actually go a little bit further with my identification and sort of read the inscriptions and find out uh, what the exact model of the Camaro was. I know that I said that it was, you know, a good model, but not top of the line, and I think that this might give us a little bit better of an idea of what specifically it is. It might be a little bit impressive to tell the air what it is. Oh, thank you. This is my favorite part. <laughs> 